Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Reverend J. Lewis Dunn, and I serve proudly, and I say this without any bias, with class number 15 here at K. Chapel Sunday School. I would like to say one thing that I would like to invite the Holy Spirit because I'm excited about it. as I was studying this lesson. The Spirit gave me so much input, and so I'm excited just to see what he has in store for us today, especially in helping us to understand how we can share godly love among believers. There's an old saying in the old days said, we got a lot of miles to travel, but we only got a short time to get there. So let us get started with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. We worship and praise you for this day, this moment, for the good times and the bad times. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the love of a God that you've been. We thank you for being the redemptive God, a God of restoration. We pray to Heavenly Father for your Holy Spirit. We pray that your Spirit will lead us in our study and prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We continue to pray for our pastor, our church family, communities, and all that have been affected by COVID-19. We pray to Heavenly Father for our frontline workers, our health care workers, and our families. Lord, we pray for our country, our leaders, and we pray for healing of our land and our nation. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to live lives with justice and righteousness as you intended for us to be. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight my Lord and my Redeemer. Today's study in our fall quarter is coming from still Unit 3, which is titled Godly Love Among Believers. Lesson 12 topic is sharing love. Our adult topic is sharing love in truth. Our background scripture is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to chapter 5, verse 11. Our printed text Acts chapter 4, verse 32 and 37, through chapter 5, through verses 1 through 11. Our key verse for today is coming from Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Follow me as I read our printed text. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostle witnessed of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that had lacked, as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostle's feet, and the distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was sure named Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levi of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphire his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being private of it to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, And tonight, why has Satan filled our heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? And thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias heard these words, fell down, and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young man arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out also. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband, 
and great fear came upon all the church and upon all as men as heard these saying. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. Now these words of God are clearly words that give us in our community a clear example of how we as Christians can not only express godly love among believers, but show godly love among believers with action, by giving generously and sharing what we have with those in need under the working power of God's Holy Spirit. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, tells us that we as believers are commanded to be generous, cheerful givers with honest intentions and without grudgingly. Now, the unified principle of this lesson is that in every community, there are people who have less than they need to maintain healthy lives. Now, as believers in Jesus Christ, we can best meet the needs of everyone in our community by following the example of the early church believers. Now, these growing band of believers <clears throat> had one quality that is rare in the modern church today. See, they were one in heart and they were one in mind. And they experienced the fulfillment of Jesus' prayer for unity in John chapter 17, verse 20 through 23. And because of their love and concern for their fellow believers in Christ, this unity led to specific action. Action is possible only when believers have a common mind and a common spirit. Here we see in our lesson that these believers came together as a unit operated in faith under the power of the Holy Spirit. They shared what they had in common with those in need. And because of their faith that God would supply all their need, the needs of everyone was satisfied. And they were able to live and maintain healthy lives simply because they were God, good stewards that used their possessions to glorify God. Now, my hope and prayer for you today is that upon completion of this lesson, that you will be able to do the following three objectives. First, explore the Jerusalem church practice and witness of communal community sharing. Second objective is that you regret your idle attachment to material goods. Third, that you be able to create, create a plan to increase your giving for the common good. Now, before we get into our lesson, Outline. Allow me first to share some biblical background information from today's lesson. That is, traditionally speaking, it is generally accepted that Luke wrote the book of Acts. The book of Acts begins where the gospel of Luke ends, namely with the ascension of Jesus Christ. In his gospel, Luke traced the advance of the gospel from the village of Nazareth to Jerusalem. In Acts, Luke's focus is on the spread of the gospel by the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. As we continue to study of the story of the advance of the gospel from Jerusalem to the center of the Roman Empire. So now, it would be reasonable to say that Luke wrote one large book, an account of the founding and expansion of Christian energy. Here in our lesson today, Luke reinforces his narrative about the ups and downs of the community of believers in the early church. As it was on the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit produces a community of sharing and continued apostolic power. Luke's point is clear that the outpouring of the Spirit in response to prayer produces great results in the kingdom of God. Let us now look at our first outline of today's lesson. And I'm coming from our commentary. Those of you that may not be aware, I should have mentioned that to you earlier. And the outline in our commentary is titled, Motivated by Love. And it comes from Acts chapter 4, verse 32 through 35. 
Now, the exposition of this passage of Scripture lists three contributing factors that motivated these believers to have a heartfelt attitude of sharing. The first factor that I want to share with you that they were a community of faith. They were Christ-centered and totally devoted, trusting God to supply all their need. The second thing I want to put emphasis on is that they were deeply united in fellowship. And thirdly, they were believers of one heart, which is to say that the vital center of their motivation was love. They were actively practicing the two great commandments of totally love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, our second outline of today's lesson is titled, A Heart of Love Touched by the Spirit of God. Now, that comes from Acts chapter 4, verse 36 through 37. Now, the thing that stands out the most in this outline is that in verse 36, Luke provides us with a specific example of the Jerusalem believers who care for needy members through the, their unselfish sharing of their material resources led by the Holy Spirit. Luke introduces a Levite by the name of Joseph Barnabas, who made a private contribution for the common cause by humbly placing his donation at the apostles' feet. So with the, this narrative, Luke is encouraging others with wealth and status in the church to cross social barriers and support the needy. Luke is challenging us today to have the same love the same care and support for each other as they did. Because a genuine Christian community involves both mission and mutual support and fellowship. Mission and support happens when believers truly care about one another and the love of Christ which they share. This sacrificial sharing is experienced when the grace of God is powerfully at work through the preaching of the gospel and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I say again, today, our contemporary challenge is to have the same genuine love and spirit demonstrated by the early church. Now, the last two outlined from our commentary, I combine together into one. And the title is Consequences of Deceit. Now, in this outline, of course, that's Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now, in this outline, we want to give our primary focus on two prominent characters, Ananias and his wife Sapphira, who were members of this Jerusalem church community and sold their property also. But unlike Barnabas, and others that receive attention and praise for their generosity learn that what Ananias and his wife did with their possession becomes a matter of life and death. Now, the generosity of Barnabas and others was an example of personal honesty and trust in the spiritual leadership of the church, as well as giving us an example of a God paid love. While the action of Ananias and Sapphira in their attempt to deceive the community not only hurt the church members who were in desperate need, but also hurt the witness and the integrity of the church on a worldwide level. Let us now focus on three significant factors of this outline. The first significant factor we would like to focus is the origin or who originated this plan of deception. Now, the best place to find the answer is from God's holy word. And we want to look at the gospel of St. John, chapter 8, verse 44 and 45. Now, this is Jesus speaking these words to some Jewish men who did not believe that he was the God of truth. This is what Jesus says. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer.
from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Now in verse 3 of the text, Peter and said to Ananias, Why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep for yourself some of the money you receive for the land? So clearly we see from God's word that Satan is the source and the originator of this plan of deception, for he is the father of lies. Now, the second thing I want to point out is motive. The motive of those involved in this plan of deception. Let's first look at Satan's motive. In the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, verse 10, it says that the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. And 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it, Peter tells us to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaring around like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, God gives us the tools that we need in order to protect ourselves from the wiles and the wickedness of the devil. He tells us that we ought to put on the whole armor of God because Satan is constantly plotting ways to destroy the work of God by divine, dis dividing, disgrace, discouraging, and destroying the people of God. Anything that has to do with the righteousness of God, Satan is out to destroy. If Satan is God's adversary, he's your adversary also. Ananias and Sapphire motive. Let's look at their motive. The books clearly tell us that the motive was recognition. They saw what happened when Barnabas and the others gave their possession, and they wanted some of the same praise and attention. In other words, they wanted credit for giving a sacrificial gift without paying the price. So what did they do? They created and executed a plan that was based on hypocrisy and deceit. Their end was immediate death. And third thing I want to focus on this last outline is that on the Holy Ghost. Now, Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, Peter says, Why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? Verse 4 says, While it remained, was it not thine own after it was sold? Was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Now, this scripture clearly validates and confirms the deity of the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Godhead, the Trinity in which all three are equal, meaning that he is omnipotent, he's all-powerful, he's omniscient, he has all knowledge, and he's omnipresent, meaning that he's everywhere at the same time. They also lie to God when they lie to the Holy Ghost, a member of the Trinity Godhead. So now in our concluding reflection, let me say this, that the scenes in Acts chapter 4 and 5 reflects on the early church as a model example of what it takes to share love and truth. They were a spirit-filled church united in their belief in the gospel, fellowship, and worship. One evidence of their unity was the way they sacrificed and shared with one another as economic need surfaced among the community. But even this act of love and generosity was open to abuse and deception. Barnabas' liberality was an illustration of the spirit of real love. 
Ananias and Sapphire were an illustration of deception. They were punished with instant death for claiming to have given all to God when they had not. See, God deals honestly and directly with the dishonesty within the ranks of the church. For God knows and he sees everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. So at this time, I would like to extend the invitation for discipleship. If there be one that do not have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to have a relationship, you, you could do so by saying this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask forgiveness of my sin. I ask you now to come into my heart and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. So if you're looking for a church home, K Chapel is the place to be. A place where we come to worship, grow, connect, and serve. Now our closing prayer. Lord, let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray that you will open our hearts to the needs of our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus and to the larger world. Take away from us, Lord, the spirit and pride and conceit and help us to humbly bless others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So once again, we thank you for coming. And remember that God loves you, and I do also. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Amen. Walk and promise keep 
lying in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You wipe away all tears, you mend the broken heart, you're the answer to it all, Jesus. I wish I knew